the most extraordinary environments, criminal, dark, fetid, evil places. I'm talking about the dismal science of economics, neoliberal economics. He would just go in there. And he would look around in a place where nobody ever returns. I mean, he, he would just go in there, utterly, utterly dangerous. He'd look around, he'd say, why, why, don't, you, why don't you change this into something based on uh, consensus? So what's this debt threat? Why the debts? He would just start uh, uh, dismantling the evil with a kind of a shrug of the shoulders and that impish uh, smile on his face. And we would watch him, and he should have been, he should have been completely dismantled by now, by, by, by the neoliberal henchmen. But he just walks around inside that darkness. And, and David, all those economic people, they got so angry with you because, because you were so, so uh, friendly and nonchalant and, and <laughs> always acted like it was just something that anybody could deal with. And you taught us to deal with it that way. <laughs> We started doing the same thing. Instead of going in like economics people, full of defensive rhetoric and uh, mysterious professional hoobajabi, just go in and be human. Amen. And that, that's what we've got to have right now. We need that blessing. We've got, we're in lockdown again here in New York. We're in lockdown. Lena comes home from school. Somebody's positive. Now suddenly we've locked the doors. We've got to. We, we've, I just feel like we've got to have we've got to have the ability to go into this dismal time and just shrug our shoulders and say, "Well, let's find a positive here. <laughs> Something's going on. The Earth is giving us a message. He would have some. Don't you don't you think that's true, people? He would have something to say about even the pandemic. He would make it a good thing that we could deal with." That's a blessing I want right now for all of us here at this birthday party. Happy birthday, David. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Ashe, Ashe. Is your stage? Excuse me? Oh, just, yeah. Do, do you want to yeah, take, take over? For a second? Um, well, you know, when I, um, can I talk about meeting him? Yeah, that's so good. Okay. But... Well, <clears throat> I know some people like um, Hollywood and she's like a politically minded person, you know, Polit uh, political activist. And um, she, she was really into David and um, I started. I, yeah. I think she's here, Hollywood. Uh, you mean like a blogger? Yeah, like I, I made it in a text with you. I think she's here. She was in our wedding. Is she introduced? Okay. David? Oh, cool. Hi, Holly. Anyways, um, you know, and I started uh, reading more about David and, and eventually, um, you know, I was playing a concert. I started following him and I was playing a concert in London at Victoria Park, a really big festival. And so I knew that he was teaching at the college. And uh, I, I asked him, hey, hey, David, would you like to go to this concert? I don't really invite guests like other people, but if you'd like, you know, you can come backstage and just hang out and we'll talk and stuff. And so he came and that was really cool. And we talked about a bunch of things and then, um, uh, it was funny. Um, we were talking about cultural anthropology and <laughs> silly stuff. And I just said, I mentioned um, this, these, these ancient ruins in Turkey, like the oldest ones that they found. I can't pronounce it. What is it? Gobi, Gobli Teki or whatever it is. And um, I was like, it's really interesting because they've always thought that a uh, society turned to farming first and then that built the cities and everybody coming together and, and religion and all this other stuff came out of that uh, when we stopped being I mean uh, complex religions but it turns out that they 
got all the hunters and gatherers together to do this, these temples. And then agriculture came out of that because it predates ag agriculture. And these are like stone temples that were there before anything else. So he didn't know anything about it. But now, I mean, in the last, whatever, eight years, everybody knows. <laughs> but um, basically, you know, uh, I'm really happy to, to be here to honor David. And um, he's such a unique person. Um, uh, yeah, I can tell how I met you. Uh, David uh, uh, told to my son, Benjamin, that he knows Anton Yukam and he showed us a movie. And, my, and I didn't know the band, but my son was like totally stunned. He was like, oh my God, no, I can't believe it. Do you really know this person? <laughs> so David just grew up in his eyes like tremendously because it's, you know, it, yeah, you were a celebrity. And then we went to Berlin to your studio and you make us very healthy <laughs> cocktail with Jesus. something like that. Yeah, and stuff <laughs> like that. It was very, very sweet and holy. Yeah, I've been working tonight. Yeah. What, I, what I really liked about David was um, he's one of those people with a life that you're kind of like, I can't believe I'm getting away with this. Like he was, he, he's smart in the way Chomsky's smart. It's like, he knows exactly what he's talking about. So you can't really, <laughs> you couldn't really mess with him with, uh, you know, semantical arguments that, that don't make sense. You know, like people that, his work, you know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it ultimately it led to a kind of freedom for him and for other people. I think, but especially for him, which is it very, was play for him, serious yeah. play. Well, because it's mad genius. It's uh, it, it, it it's what I imagine God to be like. You know, this kind of playful. When you when you know something and you know, then you, then, you, then you're so comfortable in that knowledge in a way. Like he he didn't have a lot of hostility towards people. Like even how frustrating that can be when you when it's a lonely place sometimes when you know that when you have that kind of information you can articulate it you know and just the stupid arguments that people make to justify their existence <laughs> our, our society the threads that hold everything together i guess you know i just thought it was really fascinating talking to him and also just to see that control you know and that the humorous light touch to it to it um you know i uh I don't know, you know, I didn't, I, I just think it's, it's, he had many rare qualities, you know, and they don't make people like that every single day, you know? And uh, several friends of mine were like, they just can't, can't imagine all this craziness in the world without having that kind of uh, struck, uh, it's like, it's like having bones inside you. You know, like the intellectual scaffolding, you know, to hold on to, you know, not, I'm not, not with COVID, but just like the BS. That's so funny that his book is like bullshit jobs, you know, but really the, the ultimate bullshit job is the facade that everybody carries to, to make society function. You know, that's the ultimate bullshit job that everybody has. It's like, these these uh, false con uh, constructs that that are keeping everything together, and that's what I found refreshing about him is he was he was himself, you know. What do you think he likes about your music? Because I think he was really fascinated by you. Well, you know, he he ju jumped right in on a really good show. It was like crazy, you know. Not not every co that's what I love about music is that um, it's like bullfighting in this sense it's like so, sometimes you win and sometimes the bull wins and you sometimes the bull's winning and you wrestle it to the ground i mean and not to offend any vegans or animal liberation people i'm just saying as a metaphor that's what i love about it is it can be going so south and so wrong and you you do something and then everything just changes immediately in the perspective and it's i love the jazz element and he came on a very good day. It was just one of those days where I woke up in London and I sort of just prayed, just said, 
just let this go okay okay you know i don't think about rock star things or i'm gonna do this little shake my butt in front of a mirror and get the move down you know clap and turn around or something i just want to play good and i want everybody to be happy and it was so strange because we were playing and then the heavens opened up with this rain but everybody in england has the at, at festivals has their little plastic and stuff and umbrellas so, and i was just like oh and then um I didn't notice it stopped and we were playing behind this um it was sort of a dome on this big stage and I didn't under, I didn't know but there was a double rainbow the whole time so it was just it was a really magical day and the, the best part of it for me was you know I invited him back to the bus and we just hung out and and talked and we developed a friendship and then he he introduced me to other people like that and all like uh, uh, different people you know uh What's his name? Heathcott from, have you ever met him? Heathcott, yeah, Heathcott. He's not here. He's feeling uh, bad after the first uh, first uh, injection, but uh, oh. yeah, he was very, very close. To him. I think, I, I, do, do you want to, because I also want to, I saw here Katya Diogat and David Reef, people who was, uh, who actually like was doing this carnival for David. Yes. For, 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 <laughs> And I just want them to say hi because if they, if, if they, um, I'm done. Supposed to, <laughs> no, you're supposed to, you're supposed to, to, to play music. I am supposed to play music. How would oh. I do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I've got a recording yeah. now. You can do that. Okay. I, I see. I'm, I'm a bit shy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe we should then uh, we should do the the concert later and just talk to the people more. Um, I don't know what what should we do. Yeah, it's I just. All, it, it's uh, a, it's a, should we have Neil play? Yes. All right. <laughs> okay. Um. Right. Um. <laughs> Introduce yourself. I will. I'm just sort of uh, making sure the uh, strings are all there. Yeah, so, maybe. I'm, I'm Neil. Uh, I uh, privilege got David. David was our neighbour, and uh, he came to In my world. to my bookstall, my Art yeah. Magdalene's bookstall, and uh, and so. Uh, he um, we just became very very good friends the, and uh he used to have a flat that uh that over that was almost overlooked what they call the canopy in portobello and um he got to know us and sometimes we'd be the last bat, last at night and we the last bookstall the last bookstall pa last stall packing up uh under this big tent and he'd say you hungry and then um, he'd call up, and uh, he'd call up, uh, and they, they deliver Chinese food, and he'd bring over his best crockery, and we'd take out a table, and we'd sit around a table with a half dismantled stall, and um, and share food. Uh, that's, you know, that's David. You know, he it was just it was spontaneous, and he was a regular visitor. He'd bring his takeaway food and. Uh, have a look and we'd see, he'd look for treasures on the stool. And, you know, you get to know aspects of people through their, through books. And uh, as I said, I've always felt that um, one of the, that Sherlock Holmes featured very he heavily with David, the, um, the joy of discovery and finding his own way of discovering stuff. So, uh, yes, so, um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, well, we're COVID now, but um, we'd expect when David was in town for him to be walked through maybe a couple of times in a day, and uh, you know, and he'd uh, give a few. Get, we had a, always had a few bullshit jobs on the store. <laughs> anyway, so uh, David was David was a good, fr lovely friend and neighbour. He said uh, he adopted myself and Magdalene, who's very shy on the camera, to be his uh, adopted parents in the neighbourhood. So that was just a great honour. I mean, I'm not that much older than David, but I don't know what about anyway. So David was David was a really good friend, and uh, we loved him dearly. And uh, oh, dear, it's like uh, 
you think of all the time, you know, this, oh, David, he'd like that. You know, it's like those moments, you know, there's this instance. I mean, when there's people are alive for those, those instants, we can, they, they're completely alive when you think, oh, David would like that. You know, and just it's sort of, it's still, you know, obviously David resonates in so many ways with all of us and the way we look at things and think, well, what would David do? How would he um, do that? And anyway, so anyway, I did this in the song, um, I just um, for, um, I dedicate this song, which is a song for heroes, uh, which is, uh, which is, uh, you know, it was, I, I've said this before about this song, I, I did it before, and that David, he never wanted to be out front taking all the credit. He'd want to be, he'd want to be in the group, all these other people. Yeah, well, I did this, but I wrote that word of 99 and then somebody else wrote percent, whatever it was. So anyway, this is a, a song for heroes. <laughs> is a song for heroes no medals none nor honors from the queen goes this is a song for heroes a song for those as yet unsung it's those for whom Sacrifice what they do, and they don't think twice, or even once. Let's be precise, those he heroes. So, one more time for heroes. Those who do what won't get done. This is a song for heroes. This is a song for heroes. Those who do what no one else does. This is a song for heroes. Those who do what can be done. Those for whom selfless fight what they do and they don't think twice or even once let's be precise though heroes so one last time for heroes song for one no more unsung. This is a song for heroes. This is a song for heroes. Their freedom song for heroes. Their freedom song. Their freedom song. Their freedom song. Their freedom. Yeah, there we go. Care freedom song. Care freedom is sort of, well, David, care freedom. 
Yeah, care freedom is exactly the motto of our Museum of Care, which is organizing this event today. Actually, Neil, uh, it's fantastic because one of the people who's here, Anka, 10 years ago, she made Anka, a yeah. And, and you're kind hey. of a famous hey nationally. So yeah. <laughs> that's, I, I haven't been to London in many, many years, and that's how I know of you, <laughs> famous character internationally interdimensionally well, yeah. <laughs> well i don't know about international yeah <laughs> but no she did a very she it was a very uh it's funny about that yeah that was the, the film because at the time it's like uh i couldn't i i, I can't i couldn't really absorb it it was a bit too close it's like when you record a song or something you can't you need some distance but years later you see it and you think Oh goodness! You know that's the way life used to be, and um, uh, well, you know, sun. It was Sundays. I wrote a thing about Sundays. You know, now Sundays. Uh, no, anyway, you know the way things are. Each day becomes like Sunday because it sounds like Sunday, anyway. And that's what we used to do on Sunday in the market. That was that. That's almost before David was in the hood. He was around. But that good was you know, you. good for Anka. That was, it was people like it was nice. I gave the film around, and people it was nice to remind people of the old days, very old days, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. no. yes, hopefully, we will go back to meeting every Sunday very soon. So, now we yeah, have no, to, absolutely. we're in a bit of a schedule here, so we have to present you. Uh, a band called Arkady Kots. They come from Russia, and I think they will play something for us. Is that right, Nika? Yeah, I hope so. Are you here, guys? Hey. I, like they said, they're here. Kirill Medvedev. Mm -hmm. We hear here? you. Can you unmute? Kirill. Hey. Hmm. Okay, I don't know. They're saying they're here, but I don't hear them. If somebody see Kirill Medvedev. No. Okay. Sorry about that. I got so jealous of his books, his beautiful bookshelf that I put on my virtual bookshelf background. <laughs> <laughs> Is that David's bookshelf up there? Yeah, yours. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I have one with the, that's a gun wall too. <laughs> Just in case I'm talking to some nutty people in America. I, th yeah, yeah. I think Kirill's joining now, Nika. Yeah, he's just joining now. Connected. Nika, you're on mute. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to introduce them, but maybe they can do it themselves. Kirill, are you here? Yes, you can hear us? Yes. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi, friends. We are Arkady Kohn's band. And we would like to to present our our song about partisan Lucia Pavlichenko. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, and I think you know this uh, song. We translated into Russian, and you can sing with us. Kirill, let me tell you quickly. Uh, so Woody Guffrey's son, and I just want to say that David's mom knew Woody Guffrey. They uh -huh. were not really friends, but they were like really know each other. So Woody gave a drawing to like a present, his drawing to, to David's mom, because David's uh -huh. mom also a performer and uh, uh, singer. So wow. that's Woody, Woody Guffrey. Uh, yeah, and it's 
translate it into Russian. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse, can you guys hear me? Hello? Just a second. We are facing several problems, including <laughs> our name. Could you guys hear me? Could you guys hear me? It was too late in Moscow, but we survived and we'll start just in a few seconds. Yes, That's the song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yes. This is the words. Sorry, I didn't do it before. It was. So saying, thank you, friends, that Dov Dovron and Alek and, and Kirill Arkazi Kos band from very, very cold uh, um, Moscow. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry now we have to to
turned out. Just to show, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I believe that Marissa would like to um, perhaps lead us in a uh, cakes and candles ritual. Ooh. At least I, I want some cake. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Uh, well, we have, we, have some, oh. Oh, we have some cake here um, that we can light. I don't know. I hear other people also have cake. Get your so. cake. Do we have a song that's called Get Your Cake? No, I think we'll sing sing happy birthday. Oh, okay. And uh, then transition from there. Um, how do I? There we go. Ooh, here. I think we've got lighting yeah, things than I am. Get your cake. Get your candles. You got a camera. Yes, the one in the window in the kitchen. Put this on. Okay. Look at the lights out. Look at them. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Look. Oh, nice. Gabby, you got one. You've got like a serious cake. Oh, whoa. Look at like that. Serious cake. Whoa. Cool. And then I'll get the cake. The other people with, with candles is sweet. Whoa, Nika's cake! <laughs> I want to see that cake. How, how can we make it? Ooh. Um, in the bathroom? Oh, look at that cake. I like the stars. Nika, say something. We want to see your cake. <laughs> Everyone who has cake, say something so we can all in see. The... Cake. Okay. Got a candle. Cake. Candle. Got a candle. Candle. Chocolate cake. So I I don't know how it's gonna work with with so many people, um. But if we could uh, unmute and try to sing Happy mm -hmm. Birthday, be interesting. Is that right? <laughs> yes. Okay. We're gonna move out. Okay, five, four, three. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Wish. Make a wish for David, like as, you know, if, if you can imagine like what David would wish for if he was still here, make that wish. Yum, 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 that was yeah, cool. so the, you know, I was talking with, with Nika and uh, I guess after we, we eat our cake, we can, we can do something. But, um, you know, year, years ago, um, I was part of this anti-war action in DC and we were shutting down the intersections around the Capitol building, uh, which has a whole new significance now. But <laughs> at the time we were preparing this, you know, like non-violent uh, blockade and um, 
Lisa Pan and Starhawk and <clears throat> um, and other many others were involved. There was a local local DC training group that was involved, um, and we basically uh, had a lot of drama and fracturing, like in the organizing. And it was just one of those very tense moments. And um, we ended up in the basement. I think it was the the Code Pink House at the time. Um, but we were in in a circle in the basement and just holding hands um, and breathing. And then uh, Lisa and Starhawk um, let us and Juniper um, let us in this ritual of just making present the, the ancestors. Um, so I thought that that would be appropriate for, you know, for this space to sort of call on David as, as an ancestor, oh. make, you know, make him present. Um, and I, I have a bit of sage. So I thought we could we could do that, and uh, okay. if if people are next to to someone that they can hold hands with, or if, you know, if you want to touch the screen, maybe as a substitute. I mean, it's kind of not the same, but it'll, it'll be something um, just to indicate that we're connected. And um, we could just say, you know, like David Graeber presente, David Graeber presente. Um, and then think of, you know, what what kind of uh, wish David would would make. That would be that would be great. So that's what I had in mind. Should we say it in English instead of in Portuguese? Like David Graeber is present. David Graeber is present. David Graeber is present. Sure. No, in as many languages as possible, really. Yeah. Whatever you want, yeah, whatever language is good for, I guess we have Russian, you know, we have diff different languages on the call, so I guess, yeah, whatever makes sense. Okay, so we're holding the screen, yeah? Yeah, so hold the screen, and um, I'll just bring some of this sage. Say it out loud, or should we say it? I'm sorry for I need an instructions. <laughs> okay, so just just hold hold my hands up and say, you know, Dave, David Graeber presente or present or whatever makes sense for you. David Graeber presente. 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 David Graeber. <laughs> David Graeber is present. David Graeber is present. Okay, that's all. I just want to ask also Nu, who's here. Nu is David's uh, girlfriend who was. Hey. Hey, I never asked. How did you guys celebrate this death? Hey, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't hear that. Um, I, uh, I'm an old friend of David's. I actually um, was with him when he was still a graduate student at the University of Chicago, and. Um, and uh, one year at Yale as well, and he was also one year at Haverford. And um, what I always remembered about David was how childlike he was, and you know, <clears throat> he really loved. <sighs> Sorry, this is really hard for me. Can I come back? Oh, it's okay. I, I also I, I know David from from Yale as well, and one of my nicest one memory that keeps coming up for me right now is thinking about there was a there was a program where you could take a faculty mentor out for lunch to a cafeteria, and myself and another student we would always go with David, and we'd say okay, who's the faculty mentor? And he'd be like that's me. And then the two of us would say, like, and who's the 
who needs mentorship? And we'd like, that's us. And it was just really nice. It was nice. Yale was not a very nice place. So it was little nice moments of, um, of, of maybe in some ways I'm kind of honoring David as a teacher and a mentor as well. Does anyone else have memories of David that they want to share? Diana, maybe he's here. I'll say a couple of things. I'm very, first of all, um, really happy to be here and to see people. And uh, that was a very evocative and lovely uh, celebration, Marissa, the invocation. And it actually made me really feel sort of the presence and how much I miss David really every day. Um, I'm, you know, struck by, you know, it's, first of all, it's just lovely. It's so, sort of funny, you know, David, as, as, you know, people who spend time with him know, was of course, obviously, incredibly, incredibly brilliant. And he brought so much insight to everything. Um, and I was saying today also in, on Twitter, you know, that I especially miss him right now when we're headed into a really dangerous moment for the Kurdish people, which is I'm sure most of you know, is something that David worked on a great deal over the last several years. And I just keep thinking about how hard it is not to be able to pick up the phone or get on, you know, I, I message and I get his advice and talk and strategize and plan and, you know, and conspire together and all of those things. But, you know, it also, as other people have noted, that there's just that personal side, the beauty and softness and kindness of David. And as I see people here, you know, it's so nice, for example, to see Neil. I remember one day when I was in London and telling David how nice it was to, you know, be there. And he said, but you haven't met Neil yet you have to come to the to Portobello Road you know you can't and and finally you know he did get to take me around and it was such a pleasure to stop in to the stand there and to see Neil and you know and then I see James Schneider who I've never met but you know I remember David very concerned about how to sort out James's love life you know we had to work on that <laughs> too you know so the big things and the small things sort of in every way there was this sense of joy about life of optimism of you know that we were going to make the world a better place and uh you know all i can think of is to just keep carrying that that sort of beauty uh with me as as we go forward so thank you for doing this it's lovely to see you. I can't stay too much longer, but it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, maybe we should ask James Schneider now, because James uh, indirectly introduced me and David while being living in New York in the same time. And James, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nika, for, for organizing this and, and everybody for um, yeah, for their involvement and their, their love of David. And um, uh, Debbie, fortunately, um, it all worked out. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, my, uh, David, David, you know, played the, a, a very, very important role in um, just <clears throat> cajoling my, um, my now uh, girlfriend, telling her, no, 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 he really loves you, honestly. And, um, uh, no, 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 you should, um, no, you should speak to him, it's all, it, it, it's all absolutely fine. Um, it was, it was, actually, we had dinner with him, <clears throat> the, we, we'd, we'd been together before, when we broke up before, we had dinner with him, the, uh, the after, after dinner, we're walking back from um, this, uh, this Chinese restaurant that had a really amazing duck uh, in Chinatown in London that he really liked, it was great, 
<clears throat> and and yeah, then we like broke up on the walk back. And then about 18 months later, um, or maybe less than that, I can't remember. Anyway, sometime later, uh, in part with David's excellent urging. So I, I mean, <clears throat> if I didn't owe him lots and lots of things otherwise, I definitely, I definitely owe him that. And yeah, exactly as Debbie said, what uh, he was so just um, uh, such an amazing human, such a you know loving and weird and warm and um, soft uh, person. And um, yeah, it's I, I miss him a lot. And it was so it was really it was also really nice to see how how happy he was with um, with Nika and how. Um, so we're not just happy it's like relaxed how sort of like sort of relaxed and comfortable um he was and that was yeah that was just lovely to see anyway so um, yeah it also was really for david was actually very funny that he knew for a long time and suddenly you were speechwriter of corbin and he just suddenly fell like oh my god i have access to power i can just <laughs> tell him like you know what do you think about that <laughs> so and advise him and so on and so forth so that was yeah i wish i'd done a bit more of some of the things that, that he said but it was all yeah it was always fun have getting having to sort of very very long text back and forth about whatever nonsense was go was uh, was going on and yeah he was al always a great supporter for for what we were what we were trying to do oh, i think because oh, yeah. um even though the politics aren't the same, it definitely saw that we were trying to um, open up space for movements rather than close them down and, and co-opt them. And that was, yeah, and also, but David, David was, I mean, Nika, you say this a lot, but like David was extremely pragmatic. You know, it's like, if this thing is going to help with, with this thing, then great. Um, and, and, and really not very dogmatic at all. Um, and really, sort of creative okay. and flexible person and thinker I mean super principled like 100% principled not not like breaking the line but but can see the difference between where where's principle and where's pragmatism what's what strategy and what tactic what's tactics but yeah just a brilliant a brilliant thinker brilliant human um and uh yeah so it was it was, it was what it was it's just wonderful knowing him really Oh, and also like Loki is come just now, I see. And that's uh, another person that David was really fascinated in uh, in London. <laughs> hi, hi, can you see me? Is this way better or this way? This way is better. <laughs> this way is better. Okay. Um, well, it's so nice to be here and thank you so much for um, the invitation. Um, it's funny because hearing these um, testimonies of what it was like to be around David makes me feel closer to him. And, and that's a lovely thing. I always found him to be a very, very generous person in disagreement. And I think that it's a very rare quality. Um, he would give you the feeling that it's almost as if you agreed with each other because he was so kind while he was telling you that what you think is complete rubbish, but he'd tell you in the nicest way. Um, and, and what, you know, I live next to Grenfell Tower. Um, I've been here for around 20 years. David lives in the wider area. And when we have the march, on a monthly basis, David would always come um, dressed immaculately, but he would, he was always so gracious and his way of being there was not to say, you know, not that it's in him or not that it's in many others who would come on a monthly basis, but he was somebody who people would have benefited from his experience and his ideas and, and learning from him. But at no point was he ever um, making people aware of, of that. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that this uh, really important and fantastic brain was uh, walking around. 
So, um, you know, I remember one time at World Transform, uh, following uh, the, the, the talk that I'd given, he, he, on a quite a small, small point about Trump, really blew my mind in a major way. And, you know, it's such, it's such a loss. It's such a loss to not have him now um, giving us new ways to look at things and, and, and think of things. But it's, uh, it's really good uh, to hear what you all have to say also. And, um, and, and thank you for inviting me. But so we should continue. You should do the chant, the, not chant, but rap with uh, David Jax. So I think that's the, that's, that's the goal. I just uh, should keep it going, not stop. It's, I think David would be really, um, I think he would feel strange if somebody would call him like this amazing brain or <laughs> things like that. He would feel himself that. And I don't think he would like to. So let's let's just keep going as if he would be alive. So that's my strategy at least. That's how I, I, I cope. I just don't don't agree that he disappeared. Yep. I see um new new is back and uh, also Starhawk joined in the corner i'm not sure i know starhawk was like uh, driving somewhere and so maybe there's like a window to, to check in with her oh I, I could say something um uh, I wanted to say that uh what i really loved about there were so many things about david that was just so amazing but um uh we i always loved the fact that he we could just laugh about any little thing and anytime there's something that is you know transgressive or the um the underdog uh you know gets back at the oppressor i i think that uh every time that happens in the world i always think of him uh even with the um the whole GameStop thing i was just thinking about him the whole time and how much he would just love that um, and I would just would have loved his analysis of that. Um, you know, I, I, I love the fact that he gave you a reason not to feel bad. Like, I remember when I was at the um, University of Chicago, I, <clears throat> you know, I wasn't like a lot of students who would just work these insane hours. And he, he basically would let people know that it was okay not to be like that. Um, you know, that people were, you know, creative in spurts and um, it just, you know, just getting there and being just uh, not sure of yourself and just always thinking that you, you, you don't work hard enough. And um, he just gave us, gave me sort of like, a world where it's okay not to be like that, um, y you know, and uh, it's, and I think it just infuses his work in general. Um, so he just loved the sort of like the little things like, like this, I have this like giant cockroach here that is a, <laughs> right and on, it just runs around and he would just love things like this, you know, um, I'm from New Orleans, so, you know, this cockroach is funny to me. Um, and, uh, you know, he... I guess that's, that's all I want to say now. I, I, everyone who uh, knows him just knows what a kind, loving, and optimistic person he was. And just, you know, obviously just piercing brilliance. Um, but uh, anyway, I just, I'm like, and Nika, I, 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 I agree with you. I don't think he's quite gone. Uh, I'm not, I'm not religious, uh, but I, I, I think that uh, maybe in, in physics, you know, 
uh, we, we may still find them. We just don't have the, uh, we just don't know enough about reality yet, I think. Anyway, I'm just, uh, I'm just very happy to be here with you guys. And, uh, and um, thank you, so. Yeah, I just want to say that I was never jealous of Noel because Noel was so nice. Uh, I knew that all David's passwords everywhere was still contain her name. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of like share my space with her from the beginning. And I was really pleased to, to, to meet you in London some chance ago with your family. Okay, before um, Livia Filotika will guide us in um, guided meditation, um, I can't wait for that. Um, we have a recording from uh, Zaron, who couldn't be here with us, but he offered us um, a Maori chant. Um, so I'll play that right now. I think he's here, wait, he's here. Oh, I didn't see him. You... Zaron, I hear. I think I see him like in the middle of the screen or something like. Doran? Oh, okay. Okay, I'll play it now then. Katani te titi, katani te kaka, katani o ki oiti he mauri ora. Ka hiko e au e tāra whānui ki ngā ngā whā ki ronga nui te rauia, ki pū haurangi e tū maira. E mihi ana ki a koutou, e te hoaranga tira a nika, e te iwi mō tou kaha mō tou aroha ki te whawhai tunu ake ake. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. O te mihi, e ngā matu, nō no, no ngā hau, e te whā, a mihi ana, a hau, ki te tūpuna, tini mate, E mātua, a David Graeber, ko rangatira koe, a Ari Urito, e mau mahara ana a hau i tau kōrero, a piti hono, tātai hono, te honga mate ki te honga mate, a piti hono, tātai hono, te honga ora ki te honga ora. Nō reira, e iti, e pau namu, mā kū te Tau paraparo ngāti tūwhare toa e tukua ki a koutou. A ko ngātou roi rangi te tūpuna mātua. Kau ki mātunuku, kau ki mātarangu, kau ki tēnei whenua mau e kai te manawa o tauhau. Nō reira, uri noa ki a tātou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tātou, katoa. Right. Thank you, Zan, for the uh, recording. When you see the recording of this, then you can hear me saying thank you for that recording. Um, all right. So would you like to lead us in the meditation, um, uh, Livia? Hi. Hey there, Livia. There we go. How are you guys doing? Hello. You all got your coffee? It's not a fundamental part of the whole thing. So if you don't have coffee, nothing terrible is going to happen. Um, Gabby just said that was very beautiful. That was fantastic. Thank you. It really was. Um, so I, I, I swear I won't take very long of your time, this boring thing, but I, so I met David, uh, the first time I met David, he turned up in our anthropology, social anthropology year one class with a cup of coffee. Um, and that's always going to stay in my mind as the image of David that I've got. Um, we, you know, we became friends, we did a million things together, but that one image of him turning up in that classroom with that lovely, warm, weird smile of his is always gonna be in my head. So I thought, if we are gonna bring an offering with us in our meditation, might as well be coffee. So are you sit yourself comfortably close your eyes and 
and imagine a white circle of light on the floor around you. The circle from the floor rises up and up and up and it folds over your head so that you're underneath a dome, white light. Keep your eyes closed and take a deep breath. Inhale from your nose and exhale heavy from your mouth. Keep breathing slowly and profoundly. And as you do, imagine your back connecting to the ground underneath your feet. Imagine a white string of light connecting you to the earth. And with every breath, you sink deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into the earth. Now imagine yourself walking into an elevator. And the elevator starts going down seven floors. With each floor, take a deep breath. One floor. Two floors. Three floors. Four. Five. Six and seven. The doors of the elevator open. You come out. It's night. The first thing you notice is a full moon. You are in a garden. Imagine the garden. What kind of plants can you see? What kind of flowers? Is there a stream of water? Can you hear any noises? Have a look around. Make yourself a home. Explore the garden for a minute. As you look around, you see a bench. Visualize the bench very, very clearly. What material is it made of? 
What trees surround it? What light does the moon cast over it? What can you see behind it? We start walking towards the bench. Coming from Jackie Rosen, Democrats in the Question for the. You sit down. You look around. And suddenly, from behind a tree, wearing a top hat, holding a cup of coffee, wearing a checked waistcoat. Comes David. His right hand is holding a coffee, his left hand in his pocket. Oh, hello, he says. <laughs> he sits down next to you. <laughs> and you chat, take a few minutes. Chat with him. <laughs>